Hey everybody, this is the Blondie Spur String Section. <laughs> and we're backstage at the Mountain Winery in Saratoga, California. And you're watching ACTV. Yes, you are. It's great. That's why I just started. <laughs> we're, we're so happy. We're so glad to be out here in America in these in these hotels. Yes, we are. But we're doing our second show, third show. Third show, third. 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 The first third two show. shows went fantastically well, very so nice. very we're nice. uh, very encouraged we that are. by the end of uh, a few weeks we should be getting the parts just about right. Yeah. Or Lee, anyway. Yeah. Oh, and I'm Paul um, Carbonara. I'm Lee Fox, bass. I'm Chris Stein. That guy. We found Lee was with found me. Yoko. Somewhere. He was, playing with, Yoko he was playing with Yoko. He was playing with Yoko. You were at the Beacon Theater. You saw me. Yeah, we yeah. saw you at that show where they everybody got to play John's guitars. Remember that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we met him. He showed up. And I went to the audition. He's and I've gone out ever since. Uh, yeah. We knew in five five seconds he was the guy. Yeah. That's the original well, my, my, my thing is that like everybody who gets on a stage anywhere has it in the back of their mind that they're playing in front of hundreds of thousands of people. So that's kind of a given. You know, nobody, nobody goes out on a stage and says, well, I'm going to be a loser and I'm only going to do lounge acts for the rest of my Except life. Except me. I did that. So, uh, so, you know, maybe is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, individually. I heard Jimi Hendrix and I had to play guitar. That was just a, that was it. So big Jimi Hendrix fan. Yeah, we all love Jimmy. Yeah. Is, yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's a big influence on everybody. Stones, yeah. Keith Richards, of yeah, course. Yeah, Stones, Beatles, Flatten Scrubs. That was a big Flatten Scrubs. Yeah. Thing. You know Earl Scruggs. You know. Uh, How'd you get into playing bass, actually, Lee? I was a drummer, and I just heard bass lines in my head. So I started playing bass. And he started you could take medication drums, for that. Yeah, I, I, I had to take medication. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, that was, you know, never could get, a, get any work like that. So. No, you, uh, they actually, no, I couldn't get work as a drummer, and I was playing bass, so I ended up being more of a bass player to get more work. That's like Clem spends a lot of time playing vocal lines on uh, the drums. Does, oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah, he, yeah, play, he plays sure. a lot cymbal. of yeah. well, on the cymbal. On the crash cymbal, yeah. Yes. It's okay. It's, you know, no, it's gratifying. People come up, the first album I ever bought, I was still in utero, I was, when my mother was listening to you, uh, you know, da da da, et cetera, so oh, yeah. It was, was really nice to hear Sean Lennon say how he was hearing Titus High when he was a little baby, you know, all that stuff. The original version? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 he was listening to our record. Sean we, Lennon when he was a Sean, baby? No, Sean Lennon. Oh, Sean, oh, oh. Sean. Okay. Sean said that was like one of the first songs he ever heard was, was Titus High. It was like oh, first wow. Titus High. I didn't yeah, know that. It was great, yeah. Yeah, he, I saw him saying that in an interview. Because we, we had brought a copy of the album up to the, the Dakota, like right around Easter, and then he oh. fucking went and got shot. Like We would have met him, too, oh, with John. It was really sad, you know, and he got shot right after that. And, People told me who were working for him that uh, he was he had been playing the record all the time. Oh. And there's that thing in that postcard book. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said yeah. Ringo sent no, John a, a postcard. It's sad. We would have, we would have, you know. Said uh, you should write more songs like Heart of Glass. Like Heart of Glass. Yeah. Right. He's That's telling it. Ringo to write a song like Heart of Glass, right? Right. So Ringo was telling John that. Yeah, he was. Well, um, That's yeah. what it was. Right. So yeah. Drummer. I remember this. Anyway, yeah, that's nice. Then we met Paul once. Really, any of those things, yeah, you know? Relax. Yeah, the songs can start from any kind of little idea and uh, could be one little small, spark. Small, little thing. Yeah, one little spark, one riff, and then before you know it, you got a whole thing. I, I listen to so I listen to the music a lot now. The last couple of since we're working on this next record, I find myself in a back in kind of being a fan mode, which I thought I would never quite get back there. But I now suddenly listen to a lot of music, and sometimes I'll hear a song. And then it, it'll be this, um, me trying to play the same song. It's kind of like what you said about uh, Dylan. Dylan doing, you know. There's this Bob Dylan trick where he sets up the whole band in the studio and he plays them a track over their cue mixes and says, just play along to it. And so they record what the band is playing. And it, Comes it's going to sound like crazy, a like a new song. So yeah. I'll hear something I like on the radio and then by the time I'm trying to play that very song, it's going to be something completely different anyway, you know? And then that could often be the seed idea for something I'm working on. You should try the Dylan trick. Yeah, that's what I did. 
It's a rumor. I don't know if it's actually true. I don't even know where I heard that from. It's a good idea. <laughs> well, everybody wants to hear the big hits and stuff. So, you know, like, we got to certain. We could probably go out there and play stuff that would be completely obscure yeah, to the whole that. audience, you know? Uh, we do, we do like, every time out, we do a couple of new songs. To, you like know, people expect to hear. They want to hear the, the things they know. Certain but, you know, things and... It, it depends. Like in America, it's, I think in Europe, it's a whole different thing than here for us. Don't you yeah, think? They, yeah, we, can, yeah, we can, can be a little less hit also, oriented. Also, in Europe, we, when we do festivals, we're, kinda, we're in there with like a lot of the newer bands. So there's no like the 80s, any of this. It's all one thing. We, they they kind of remember the band yeah. as like a, a trailblazers. So kind of honored that way. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. New Wave was, was, was a deliberate attempt to find a nicer thing to call it than punk. So it was kind of started by like the Trouser Press Bomp Magazine type people, you know. They were, it was a very conscious effort to find a, a more cheerful uh, fucking name for the whole thing. And your take on that was basically it was just manufactured again. Yeah, right? I mean, and punk does it. Punk has... The phrase punk has more to do, as Debbie who always says, has more to do with fashion than music anyway, you know, it's more about what you're wearing. It's just a name. It's rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, people, like, rock and roll is the, 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 you know, the basic answer to that question is, you know, people think Barry Manilow is rock and roll, so yep. there you go, you know. Barry rocks. I mean, you, you know. <laughs> but you have Barry and you have, uh, you know, the Ramones in the same, you know, under the same heading, so. Who's that? There's the kid. Somebody at the door? Well, we're probably starting October now here. We demoed how many songs we've got yeah, in the like box? Fucking over 20, which is unusual. Yeah, so we have tons of material. Because we're finally we're working it up on the computer. It's, it's unusual. I've never gone into a record project with this much material before, so that's kind of exciting. We have the, the three basic guitar styles here. That's right. Represented. We represent the three basic guitar styles. Yes, finger. I use these finger, three finger picks, known as the claw hammer method. You know, with two metal ones and one celluloid one. It goes like that, bing it in like like the old style banjo players and stuff. Me, just the two, uh, these two guys, and I um, pick and fingers. Pick. So hybrid. I'm a hybrid picker. Yeah. I'm using a, a simple tube amp, a Mesa, what the hell is it called? I don't know. Some kind of Mesa head. <laughs> That's just got, my rig is super simple. It's just a couple of channel switching things and yeah, nothing, basic, nothing exciting. too exciting. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ampeg SVT, uh, half a cabinet, uh, four tens and an SVT head with the cabinet turned backwards to keep the volume on stage down. Which is a good idea for the sound man. And I'm just using a Marshall head and like one, I'm using just one pedal at this point, hardly anything. I use a little bit every echo pedal, delay, and a tube screamer, and kick in the, the, the overdrive on the Marshall for some solo crap. That's about it. It's pretty simplistic, too. I mean, yeah, you know, I, so I'm going to. Those guys go on stage with the fucking, you know, yeah. rack full of shit and preamps and no, we don't have that. all that stuff, yeah. No, we don't do that. No, it's for, for very basic. You can even have your laptop on stage and be playing through that these days, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Little biscuit. <laughs> That's where he's been all his life. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I never. Does Limp Bizkit sound like Blondie? No, no, but the, no, the, the crossover material, <laughs> oh, I see. the whole. Oh, uh, the, yeah, the, no, the, the I. Pop and the, and the rock thing. Yeah. We're all for it. You know, I, yeah, I really great. like. I love that new Ludacris song. The last one, I love Stand Up. It's great. You know. Rap music. I, I just, I clearly remember at the time, talking to all these record exec guys, and they're all going, "Rap music is a fad. It's gonna pass." You know, and it just didn't feel like that at the time, and now it's on the fucking McDonald's commercial scene. You know. Well, you used to go up to South Bronx all the time before. Not all the time, once oh, or twice. Once or twice. It like I was ragging in the hood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it feels great. Yeah. We wish we toured more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like to be on <laughs> all the time. Yeah. 
Every day, every night. Every night. No, but honestly, it takes. It, I always say it takes about two weeks to get used to being on the road, and we're in our first week right now, so yeah. we're we're usually much more uh, eloquent. But um, after two weeks, we really start to get in the pocket. But like I said before, I'm surprised by and pleasantly so that the band sounds so good day. after yeah. just a few shows. It's gotten pretty automatic, like every night. It's good. Well, we, well, we, we once was... wanted to have the Stonehenge Monument man <laughs> come down on stage, and they made it was too small. Uh, <laughs> Chris will think of all the great stories after we're out of here. Yeah, <laughs> well, I know of one, but I can't tell it. So this is Blondie backstage at the Mountain Winery, the Mountain Winery. signing off for ACTV. Hello, Daddy. Hello. Hi, Daddy. Hello. We will see you down the road. We're here. We'll soon be there. See you later.